Hi YouTube, I'm a massive fan of the artwork of Derek Riggs, the guy that did all of the best album covers for Iron Maiden. Um, this is a sculpt that I copied from his bit of artwork for Can I Play With Madness, um, probably my favourite design of his. In this video I'm going to be showing you some of his best artwork through a series of postcards that I've collected since the early 90s. First, I'd just like to thank Derek Riggs and his wife for putting my sculpting video on their Facebook page. Got me a lot more hits than I normally get. If you want to see how I made this, I'll put a link to my sculpting video at the end of this one. Or you can visit Derek Riggs Stuff, his Facebook page. Right, so this first postcard of Derek Riggs is my favourite to this day, Can I Play With Madness? Um, you've got the head cracked open so it looks like an egg with a spoon above it. And the spoon just looks like it's kind of hovering there, which is brilliant. Then you've got the um, hand grasping a brain, severed neck with all the vertebrae showing. It's nice and gory, just the sort of thing that I love. And this is just a different version of the same design, just turned on its side. Next we've got the design for the clairvoyant. Really similar background to the last postcard, but you've got the um, laser eye going in one direction and the electric eye going in the other direction. Lots of nice flames and this cool twisted thing in the background. I really love this. Next we've got the evil that men do. You've got this demonic little creature like with these kind of electric wings, really cool. And then a few snakes, which I really love as well. And then you've got this little man imprisoned behind what could be, I suppose, threads of saliva from Eddie's mouth. And then you've got this nice flame effect with all the smoke surrounding everything. Next we've got Somewhere in Time, where Derek Riggs has turned Eddie into this cyborg Eddie. A um, brilliant concept, and I was talking to a friend recently, and my friend said that this is his particular favourite bit of Derek Riggs' artwork, and I can understand why. All these scenes where we've got Eddie out and about at night time as well, um, just really cool kind of atmospheric lighting. Here's a nice variation of that same image. Next we've got Stranger in a Strange Land with Cyborg Eddie portrayed as this not to be messed with Clint Eastwood type character. And again we've got really cool little aliens and creatures in the background. And just captured the really nice smoky atmosphere. Then another image to really get your imagination going with this kind of post-apocalyptic scene with Cyborg Eddie and a sort of flying car. The next few designs have a similar theme where you've got Eddie coming through a hole. In this case it's Cyborg Eddie again. Then we've got this one with Eddie cut in half and these nice melting edges. Then this one with Eddie looking like a mummy like he does in Power Slave. And um, this is cool with all the kind of nice textures around the edge of the hole as well. Then the next few images show Eddie out on the streets at night time. He's normally um, really well lit by a street light or by the moon. Um, he's looking particularly scary in this image and I've actually got a little metal pin badge of this one as well. Again, look at the amazing lighting effects on this one. Um, and particularly scary image, like you can imagine this in like a horror movie. Uh, it's like the stuff of nightmares. That nice pale yellow lighting again. And what I really love about this one is all the little monsters and kind of creatures all around the edges of this whole postcard. In this one, all the foreground figures have just been done in yellow and then all the darker tones. So it almost gives that sort of sepia photo effect. In this image, for peace of mind, I don't think Derek Riggs could have captured Eddie as a caged animal any better than he has here. It's absolutely incredible. And you just get the feeling if you get any closer to this postcard, you're going to get bitten. Then we've got Flight of Icarus, with Icarus getting too close to the sun and his wings melting. Um, but perhaps with a little bit of help from Eddie with his demonic bat-like wings. The next few postcards are for the number of the beast. And this one, you've got a little tiny human there. I don't know if you can make that out. And that's being controlled by the devil. And then you've got uh, the devil being controlled by Eddie. And a similar theme here with the decapitated head of the devil in the grasp of Eddie. This is just a variation of the previous postcard where um, the image has been mirrored and the uh, text is in a slightly different position. Next we've got Made in Japan with these really cool stage lighting effects um, and this particularly bright white light coming from above just lighting Eddie really well. Very effective. Next we've got a few images with the UK flag on. Um, this one obviously Made in England with Eddie on a motorbike. And here's another biker Eddie with the flag on the road. Then we've got this one for the trooper with Eddie depicted as a soldier. 
then this one's done like one of those old posters that was like uh, your country needs you or the army needs you that sort of thing and then you've got like a little baby with claws here uh, and you know Eddie split in half again and you can see a little apple core in his rib cage which is a nice little touch this postcard's enough to set anybody's teeth on edge. You've got Eddie just crunching a stone version of the Iron Maiden logo. I always found this image quite thought-provoking. I think it's because, you know, it's talking about wasted years and your kind of limited time on Earth. While well, you've got this kind of view of space just reaching out into kind of infinity. This is another of my favourite bits of Derek Riggs' artwork really atmospheric piece here and again very thought provoking so you've got the angel on one side devil on the other side and then you've got like death just behind his shoulder and Eddie's looking like he's really thinking about something and he's looking very serious next I love the sense of scale in this image where you've got Eddie depicted as this absolutely massive statue on the front of a pyramid for power slave and here he is as an Egyptian mummy being brought back to life by lots of electrical charge. I owned this particular postcard for years and I always thought this was the whole design, but it's not. There's more to it and you'll see that in the next postcard. Um, but here we've got Eddie cut in half, holding his intestines. Um, you've got ripples in the water, his head's cut in half and you've got um, smoke coming out the top, forming another Eddie face at the top there in the sky. Um, and then you've got these kind of surreal lights hanging down from an invisible ceiling. Uh, very atmospheric again, I really love this design. So this is the other postcard that I bought a lot later, and it was only then that I realised there was a lot more to this design. So you've got these other icebergs in the background with all these kind of eddy forms in them, and the hanging lights go a lot further back. Here we've got another postcard with a similar iceberg theme. The actual iceberg in the background looks like an eddy that's kind of mutated or um, sort of melting. And then you've got eddy in the foreground with the top of his head chopped off. Next we've got this one for Phantom of the Opera with uh, eddy there playing an organ. And the actual organ has got another sort of eddy head on it. Then we've got this design for the first 10 years, 1980 to 1990. And you've got uh, eddy there as a sort of skull and crossbones. Next you've got this design for No Prayer for the Dying and again Eddie is so well lit that it really draws your eye towards him. Then there's this one for Live After Death where we've got really great flames again and this nice like uh, electric kind of beam going towards his head and nice electricity between his uh, wrists again. This design's got really nice kind of limited range of colours and then you've got him sort of backlit by the moon. Here's a very similar design, although Eddie is a lot more kind of creature-like, or is actually sort of part of the tree as well. This one's a bit different. We've got Eddie in an Australian hat, killing lots of kangaroos. This design has got him driving a really massive, rusty old truck with the smoke billowing out of the exhaust. You can really imagine a loud noise from the horn. These next two designs are very similar to each other, so you've got Fear of the Dark live, and a real live one. Both of them have got this really nice bright red background and Eddie looking really quite scary. <laughs> so most of these postcards you're seeing I actually owned in the late 80s or early 90s and I actually cut them all up at the time and, and just cut the kind of best bits out of each design and made a kind of cool collage type thing. Um, and then I sort of regretted that and I ended up re-collecting all the postcards. This one was actually one of the hardest ones to get back again. I kept searching for it on eBay and eventually managed to find it. So it's the design for Two Minutes to Midnight where you've got Eddie depicted as a soldier again and you've got this cool mushroom cloud in the background. Next we've got Aces High with Eddie as a fighter pilot with all these kind of uh, aeroplanes in the background being burnt up. This is just another variation of the Aces High one. Then we got a similar design but with Eddie looking slightly deranged uh, with some machine guns. Sticking with the aeroplane theme we've got this one for Flight 666 but it's with Eddie uh, looking a little bit larger because he's uh, ripping apart a jumbo jet. Next we've got this demon head with these kind of really scary teeth and uh, glowing red eyes. This postcard is a kind of a cross with uh, Cyborg Eddie at the top and then you've got the um, Power Slave underneath him. And finally we've got this design with Eddie portrayed as a huge burning wicker man. 
lots of great fire effects and you've also got these kind of pagan goat heads at the bottom. Okay, I'm just going to go back to this design for Can I Play With Madness and leave it in the background just while I sum up because it is still my favourite design of Derek Riggs. Um, so I just wanted to say that as somebody that went to art college and university to study illustration, I can really appreciate all of the artwork of Derek Riggs. Just the amount of effort and uh, detail that he put in. And I know that a lot of his actual artwork was only the size of an album cover, so pretty small. When you consider the amount of detail that's in that, um, it's incredible, it really is. Um, so I've got all my favourite artists, you know, and some of them are classical artists like Rembrandt and Da Vinci. And I, I love different artists for different reasons, you know. I love surrealist artists like um, Salvador Dali for his kind of inventiveness and Hieronymus Bosch, people like that. I love um, graphic artists like Escher um, for their kind of mathematical skills and uh, just completely different kind of styles of artwork. And I love you know, more modern artists as well. Like, I really love uh, Giga, who designed Alien. Um, so, yeah, different artists for different reasons. But I'd have to say that Derek Riggs uh, is definitely my favourite album cover artist of all time. Just the amount of work he's done over the years for Iron Maiden and just the amount of uh, time it must have taken him to do all of this. But again, just the inventiveness of creating this character and putting him in all kinds of different situations and creating all kinds of different worlds for him to live in. So my idea for making this video was as a tribute to Derek Riggs and his work and I'm hoping that these 50 or so postcards will give anybody who hasn't seen his work before a really good kind of idea of the quality of his work and what he's done for Iron Maiden over the years. If you've enjoyed watching this video please hit the like below um, hit subscribe if you want to see any videos that I post in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.